The following segment is sponsored by Providence Health and Services. This segment of AM Northwest is brought to you by Family Matters. Health and education, safety, and the quality of life. K2 and our partners are proud to bring you Family Matters, offering solutions to the hard questions. Because K2 and Providence Health and Services know that family matters. Welcome back to AM Northwest. 600,000 Americans will die of cancer this year in the U.S. There are successful treatments for many cancers, but very few once a cancer spreads to other parts of the body. Here to share how Providence is working to change that, we welcome Providence Cancer Institute researcher, Dr. Eric Tran. Hi, doctor. Good morning, Helen. You, now, you're working on something uh, to treat advanced pancreatic cancer. Tell me a little bit about that. Sure. Uh, so I work on a type of therapy called adoptive cell therapy, which is also known as uh, T-cell transfer therapy. And it's a type of immunotherapy that uh, tries to harness one type of immune cell in your body called the T-cell. And researchers like myself are interested in T-cells because under the right circumstances, we know that T-cells can directly target and kill cancer cells. Um, adoptive cell therapy uh, generally is uh, the basis behind it is really that we take T-cells, extract, isolate T-cells from a patient. We take those T-cells into the lab, grow them to typically billions and billions of these T-cells, and reinfuse these T-cells back into the patient with hope that there's a larger number, a large army of these T-cells, that these T-cells can mediate regression of disease. And so uh, within adoptive cell therapy, um, that can be really divided into kind of more two general approaches. Uh, one is uh, using naturally, uh, naturally derived uh, T-cells. Right. Um, and this is um, an approach like the first generation approach that was really pioneered by my former mentor, Dr. Steve Rosenberg at the NIH. And um, in this approach, uh, a tumor is taken from a patient, taken to the lab, and then the T cells within that tumor are grown out to billions um, and then reinfused back in the patient. And the, the idea is that some of the T cells in that tumor are there because they're recognizing the cancer, but they're losing the battle. And so if you can amplify them to billions and reinfuse, wow. then maybe that would be an effective yeah. approach. Uh, the, the second approach is um, what we're pursuing here, and it actually involves gene engineering. Um, and so instead of taking those T cells that are within the tumor, what we can do is take T cells that are circulating in the blood from the patient and take those into the lab. And then we use gene engineering techniques to insert um, uh, a gene that will now redirect that T cell to specifically target cancer. So that's the approach that my lab here is working on. And you've been doing a clinical study with one woman, right? A one patient, a Florida woman. Tell me about her and what you were working on with her. Sure, yeah. So this uh, this patient, uh, her name's uh, Kathy, and so she's uh, from Florida. Um, somehow she she got a hold of me and uh, she left a, a sweet message on my phone, um, really seeing if there's any treatment options for her. And she's a patient with metastatic pancreas cancer, um, and she had progressed through all standard standard of care, chemotherapy, radiation surgery, um, and so she really didn't have many other options, And but she did her homework, and somehow she found me, and um, based on the genetics of her tumor and the genetics of herself, um, it turned out that uh, potentially we had a receptor um, using that gene engineering approach, as I mentioned, that potentially could target um, a mutation expressed by her own cancer. And so once we, those matched up, once we knew that her, uh, the genetics were compatible with the receptor that we had, we um, essentially uh, wrote a single patient uh, clinical trial for this patient. Um, and then we took her blood cells, um, her peripheral blood cells, we took those to the lab. We um, then inserted this receptor that could now target a specific mutation expressed by our cancer, grew those up, um, to uh, approximately 16 billion T cells. Wow. And then we infused those T cells back into the patient. Okay, and how did she do? Yeah, so um, for her, at, at her first follow up scans, uh, about 30 days after we infused these cells, um, we took a look at her uh, lung CT. So she had metastatic lung disease, um, lung. So the pancreas cancer had spread to her lungs. Oh. And um, her tumors were shrinking. And so wow. at 30 days afterwards, um, we, we saw about a 60% reduction in the tumor volume in, in her lungs. And then um, and she came for subsequent follow-ups. And um, that continued to drop. Uh, 
uh, to this date, which is a, about 70% reduction in the tumor volume in her lungs. So this is uh, now more than nine months after after this one single infusion of T cells. Well, that's incredible. How significant is this result? So I, I do want to stress that this is still highly experimental. This is one patient. Uh, so we're still in the early stages of evaluation. But I think as you alluded to, um, pancreatic cancer is one of the deadliest cancers out yes. there. And um, there, there are no effective therapies for this um, cancer, even immunotherapies, different types of immunotherapies. Uh, pancreatic cancer seems to be very resistant to these types of therapies. And so I think um, for Kathy and this patient, what this provides is that at least in some patients, uh, some circumstances that T cells, when they're targeting the right thing, uh, can cause the tumors to shrink. Um, the, the one thing is that obviously this is a still an ongoing uh, response. And so uh, she's in no, no means cured at, at right. this point. Right? We still see, you know, small nodules in her, in her lung. But um, again, to have a uh, greater than nine months type of response and this type of refractory uh, cancer type provides optimism that perhaps we're on the right track. Yeah. And now what we have to do is, okay, well, make this work for more patients right. and uh, also maybe make the T cells even more potent combine it with other therapies so that, you know, those, uh, you know, the 70% reduction can be 80, 90, or even a complete response. Right. Incredible. Incredible. We want to tell our viewers, if you, you can hear Dr. Tran speak and meet the patient from the clinical trial, it's part of the Creating Hope virtual event. That's Wednesday night at 7 o'clock. It's open to everyone. Register if you'd like to bid during the fundraiser. Dr. Eric Tran, thank you so much. We'll put all the information, too, for everyone on our website at k2.com. My pleasure. Uh, doctor, thank you. thank you for all the work you're doing. It's incredible. Thank you very much. You bet. We'll be